What's going on there, guys? We are out here with the uh, good old-fashioned Eclipse, and here we have an issue. Our issue being our wideband sensor. I have an AEM Series X wideband, and over the last few days, once I get it on the highway, I didn't record anything, but the, the gauge starts giving me just dashes. So that means that the sensor is either reading faulty or there's something wrong with the wiring. I'm really not sure. Um, I've unplugged the sensor so far. I took it out. I cleaned it. There's a lot of crap on it. I'm assuming that the sensor's bad. I've had it in here for, I don't know, if you guys go back in the history of the channel and watch some of the videos, you'll see when I installed it. I've been searching around trying to figure out exactly what I can use to swap out this wideband sensor with something else that's a little bit more affordable. I know it's a Bosch LSU 4.9 sensor. Here I have a Bosch LSU 4.9 sensor. You'll notice the part number 17212. The sensor is about 70 bucks and it's available at AutoZone. It's right here. The plug lines up. The only difference that I see is it has this little uh, mounting point for it, which is kind of cool. I'm sure it fits OEM spec to something. I know Rolls Royce is what popped up a lot when they were searching for it, but we're going to see if the sensor is going to work with the wideband gauge, if it's going to read properly. I was getting the dashes, everything like when I'd start the car, it would usually idle around where my tune was set, 14.7, 15.2, and it would fluctuate back and forth. And this is simulating my, my narrow band signal for my idle. That was all good. It was using open loop when I'd gotten to boost and I had a little data logger thing plugged in like a little, uh, obd2 dongle to just keep a close eye on my smartphone keep an eye on just my fuel trims and stuff like uh, how far out bank one would be and it was taking away 15 percent of fuel so it was running rich i could smell fuel so far what i'm going to do is swap the sensor out see if it works if it's compatible with aem series x wideband i found one reddit thread talking about it online either way we're gonna we're gonna mess around we're gonna try this out what you need is a 7 8 o2 sensor socket or a 7 8 box end, open end wrench. I like using one of these good old floppy guys right here. Ignore the drain snake from work. We're gonna test it out. We're gonna see if it reads correctly. Uh, no free air calibration is needed. It's not like the uh, LC1s or the old AEM stuff. You just plug it in and you should be able to key on and let it go, or you can run. There is a calibration option you can try to run, but I don't think we're gonna need to. So what we're gonna do is pop this thing out, put some anti-seize on these. Oh wait, we don't have to do anything. There's anti-seize on it already. Look at that guys. So we're not gonna put anti-seize on anything. The only thing that's different between this is it's got an open face around the outside edge there where the, the stock one, well, the original one that I got with the wide band has a bunch of little holes instead of that open rim. If this works, that will be fan freaking tastic We're gonna pop the old one out. I'll show you the differences between the two and hopefully this works. So this is the one right here that I just bought. This is the one that comes with the AEM Series X wideband kit. The sensors look darn near the same. The thing is, I read some, some weird information about these things that these are generics. Some people are getting generics from like Summit and Rock Auto and like other places like that that sell these things. And what you're looking for is something that has serial numbers and not necessarily what this one has on it, but... Bosch LSU 4.9 is supposed to be on the side of this if it's a Bosch part, but it's in a Bosch box. We'll see. I'm I'm not speaking about that because I don't really know. I read a couple of contradictory things about it, but here's the comparison between the older one that came with it on the left and the new one on the right. This one has a bunch of holes in it. This one's just open on the outside and at the tip. I think she should work. The, the plug is the same. Let me show you the plug in real fast just so you guys can see. Yeah, you can see. Same amount of pins. You got six pins here, six pins here. Same shape, same shape. Just a little different on the length. We're going to check this out. It was oscillating really fast for the longest time, like nice and standard. It would go 14.7, 15.2, 14.7, 15.2, just at idle. And lately, for the last few days, it's been kind of lagging and then sitting in the 13 sometimes. So I checked the wiring in it. All that looks good. My tap to the ECU, my ground connection all looks fine. So everything's kind of pointing at a bad sensor fingers crossed here guys i'm gonna go ahead and throw this thing in here get it plugged in we're gonna test it out all right guys we got this thing thrown in all i had to do was snip one zip anyways it's in the down pipe we're gonna leave this thing up just because i have to affix it to something here shortly we're not gonna fire it up yet we're just gonna give it the old key on see if she wakes up or not heat oh we're heating things are looking good oh boy i think this might work actually and drum roll well look at that so apparently it's working all right i don't know if it's true or not but i had a guy rip me apart in the comments a while ago saying not to let it warm up and then started afterwards because the flash of you know cold exhaust gases rushing past a heated sensor would crack it 
Who knows? Maybe that's what's wrong with it right now. We're gonna let that cool off for a couple of seconds, and uh, let's let's test fire it. See what the numbers say. All right, guys. I know it seems stupid to say that that worked, but this would not go 14.6, 14.7 to 15.2 and fluctuate like this at all over the last couple of days. Um, this sensor was doing whatever the hell it wanted to, and once I got on the highway about 50 miles an hour, it was straight dashes across here at maximum, maximum lean, even though it said on my app that I was running rich. So I think we're going to go ahead and call this a win. I'm going to go ahead and drive this around. I'll post down below in the comments tomorrow. I'm going to upload this video tonight, but I'll post in the comments tomorrow whether or not this fixed it. I stayed out of boost for the last couple of days just because I didn't want to hurt something or melt something, but right now, these numbers were not doing this like they were before. You know what I mean? Like back when I installed this thing, this is exactly what it would do once I got my tune dialed. This looks like it should have fixed our problem, so I'm going to call that a win for right now, but don't hold me to it. Wait till you see that comment posted below. I'll pin it. Uh, 70 bucks compared to like 183 for that replacement sensor. It's a good deal. Here, let's shut her down. Guys, I guess with some certainty we can say that the AutoZone Bosch wideband sensor, the LSU 4.9 sensor, part number 17212 will in fact work with your Series X wideband. And you guys just saw me turn it on and it gave us a reading. I think that this is going to work out good for me. I'm thinking about doing a turbo upgrade here soon, guys. I know I've already showed you how to take a uh, big 16G and turn it into a hybrid TDO 620G. I found another upgrade that I'm really interested in doing because it has a uh, special housing on it. Uh, compressor housing, that is. So we've upgraded the turbine housing from factory to the 7 centimeter one. We've added the TDO6 wheel and 20G compressor housing. It's got powder coat on it, all that fun stuff. I'm thinking about going and getting a billet one, a billet wheel, and you'll see. Hopefully you'll see. Post a comment down below if you guys are interested in that. But I'm going to call that a win for right now. I'm going to throw a couple zips on the, the cable hanging so it doesn't end up touching the exhaust and melting or something. But I'm, I'm super pumped that this worked out so far. Again, I will let you know down below once I take the highway tomorrow to work if I get the same readings or not. I don't think I will. This sensor right here, I think it's just cooked. I've had it for a couple of years now and with all the stuff I've done to this thing and all the time it sat and all the time it ran, it probably got cooked. I'm going to save it in this box, put it downstairs on my parts shelf and uh, worst comes to worst, if there is some random hitch in the wiring someplace that I just missed, I guess we're going to have a good sensor on top of things. But that's it for now, guys. Thanks for checking this out. Hopefully you found it interesting and informative because I was kind of clinching my cheeks looking for a sensor. Again, 7 8 O2 sensor socket or open and wrench, pull that sensor right off, and you can pick up this part number right here for the last time. 17212 at your local AutoZone. All right, guys, have a good night. I'll see y'all in the next one. Take care.